In this episode of Velocity Labs, we're going to use a lot of swear words. This is one of those tutorials that I've been looking forward to and dreading for quite a while now. I've talked to so many 1G DSM owners that have had to replace their power steering racks. It seems like about 25 years is the max shelf life for those things. I've also heard that it's a giant pain in the butt, so I've kind of been procrastinating on this one. Not anymore. Now, this really isn't that hard of a job, at least on paper, but in practice, things can get pretty messy. I used this tech article on DSM tuners to help walk me through on how to do this. It has fantastic pictures to help you out, and I'll refer back to them in this video as well. I also did a little cleaning and organizing to make sure that I wasn't wasting time looking for tools. First up, let's unbox the new rack and take a look at it. Yep, that's a power steering rack. Step one, of course, is to jack up your car. Take the wheels off and then get surprised at your own brakes. That looks pretty good. I never see these things under the stock wheels and I always forget about them. They're off the front of a 2005 Mitsubishi Outlander. They're cross-drilled and slotted rotors with dual piston calipers. They're pretty awesome. Anyway, with the wheels off, let's take a look at what we're dealing with underneath the car. Spider. Die. Yep, that is a hot mess. The power steering fluid is leaking from at least three spots in the rack, and most of it is dripping right down on my downpipe. It's been making a wonderful smell for quite a while now. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is disconnect the rack from the steering column. There are three things to disconnect, and they're a bit of a pain to get to. They're on the firewall on the driver's side near the bottom. Here's a picture from Laser Speed Demon that clearly shows the three things that we have to disconnect. If you've got small hands and arms, you may be able to reach through all the clutter, but I had to loosen up the brake fluid reservoir, move a couple of vacuum lines, disconnect the brake booster line, disconnect the spark plugs, and a few other small pieces. I also disconnected my upper AC line, but if you do this, make sure to take the car to a service station to get the AC drained first. My AC hasn't been working in a long time, so I didn't have to worry about it. Once all that was done, I could finally get a hand in to start loosening up all the bolts. Here's a shot from the passenger side of the car and you can see what we're working with. The first one is a 12 millimeter that holds the shaft to the spline on the rack. Next is the 17 millimeter lower power steering line bolt and the hose next to it. Get those lines disconnected and then make sure you have an oil pan ready. Nailed it. Now that we have all that disconnected, you can see the top part of the rack here dripping fluid all over the place. You know that when you're making a mess that you're making progress. Next we'll move to the tie rod ends. Hit them with some WD-40 or PB blaster, then take out the cotter pin and it's a 17 millimeter nut on top. Pop them out with a separator or a pickle fork and then we'll move on to the sway bar brackets. There are just two 14 millimeter bolts. Once those are out, we'll be able to wiggle the sway bar around enough to get to a couple bolts on the power steering rack. The downpipe is also in our way, so we're gonna pop that off as well. Mine is an original. It's a three inch downpipe by Megan Racing. Taking it off is fairly simple. Just four bolts and an exhaust hanger to get it off the car. One power steering fluid covered downpipe. You can see where it's been dripping, that's for sure. Pretty nasty. Once that's off, we can wiggle the sway bar around enough to get to the bolts holding the power steering rack in place on the driver's side. But we're also going to need to drop the two subframe pieces in the way to make things easier. There are a few bolts on each side to take these off. A large impact wrench makes this a breeze. I didn't have one, so I borrowed one from a friend for this job. I highly recommend having one on hand for jobs like these. It really beats trying to get enough leverage while you're lying on your back underneath the car. Filthy cross member. Now we can get the four bolts out that are holding the power steering rack in place. Woohoo! 
I tried wiggling the rack out as the car sits now, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah, this is not coming out of here. There's a few people online that said you can wiggle out the power steering rack without dropping the transfer case, but I, uh, I just don't see that happening. So we're gonna go ahead and unbolt it. And then I realized even if I did manage to force the rack out by twisting it and turning it, I'd still have to do the same thing to the new rack and possibly damage it putting it back in. So I said, screw that noise, let's just drop the transfer case and be done with it. So that's what I did. There are five bolts holding the transfer case on, here, 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 and one hidden here. Take them out, support the transfer case with a jack and a block of wood, and then carefully wiggle it out. If you're not careful, it'll drop right off the jack, clunk down on the floor, and you're gonna be terrified that you might have damaged something. Ask me how I know. Anyway, with that out of the way, we can finally wiggle the old power steering rack out. Oh yeah, that is how I'm gonna do that one. Down around the control. Oh yeah, I'm a piece of cake. We're gonna pull it out like this. Yep, that is the way to go. Woohoo! Oh, I've slain the beast. There's a few pieces that need to be switched over from the old rack, like this nozzle thingy and then both of the tie rod ends. There's also a rubber bushing that protects the passenger side of the rack that needs to be swapped over. Oh, it was already cut. Ha! <laughs> Hilarious. And make sure to use all the new seals that came with the new power steering rack so you don't end up with any leaks. Also, and this is really important, make sure that you have the rack spline mated to the steering column before you tighten all the bolts up and put everything back together. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Once that's done, just bolt the new rack in place and make sure that the steering spline is centered, bolt the transfer case back in place and put the cross members back on and then start hooking everything back up. All right, so that wasn't that bad. Even if you're doing it on a garage floor, it should really only take about four to eight hours depending on how everything goes. My car fought me tooth and nail the whole way though and it ended up taking me an entire day and the next morning to get it done. I did do a couple things wrong though and forgot to connect the steering spline and a couple other things, so if this is your first time doing it, I would set aside a whole day and maybe the weekend just in case. And for those of you who have experience changing a power steering rack, post the car that you did it on and how long that it took you so other people can get an idea of how long it takes. Or you can just try to see if you can beat my time of two days for a 1G DSM. Shouldn't be too difficult. Anyway, for the next video, I'm gonna be updating you guys on Project Eclipse. We're gonna take it to the drag strip and make some passes, and then we're gonna start in on some more upgrades. Hit subscribe, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it.